72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late. Damn, I'm in the face my mind. Let's live in that cloud now, and this night is never on vacation. Sound of that mind's already in. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Horcrux here. Today I'll be bringing you a combat analysis for my recent uh, 1VX I had on my Magic Sorcerer OG PvP build. That I posted a few days ago. I'll leave a link to it down in the description or a card above. Uh, this is 1v9. No, it's not against brand new players like my intro clip to my build video. This is against some experienced players. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this clip play out and then I, afterwards I'm going to go back and analyze every little part of it that sticks out to me. And yeah, here we go. Okay guys, I was not happy with my first recording, so let's do this shit again. Alright, so right off the bat here, I do something that's pretty unique that I don't see any sorcerers doing. First of all, I'm running mines on the front bar. The reason I'm running mines on the front bar is so I can do shenanigans like this. You streak mines. Why do I do this? So not only do I streak, they had to break CC, so now that gives me a chance for the long ass cast animation for the mines to be on the ground. Now what happens is they're stuck in a minefield. So at this point, if you want to roll dodge away, dodge my frag, you're going to be hitting a mine, which pretty much is the same as a frag, possibly even two. So most people don't realize this is happening because of the delay time in the mines. So talk shit about mines or don't use them, but a simple play like this makes all the difference. It doesn't help me too much right here. But it can. See, this guy charged in. If anyone wants to fuck with me, they have to go through my mind right now. So, just to start out, that's one little uh, technique I kind of like to do. Um, people have their own little niche plays, and I think that's uh, that's mine. So, the very first thing I'm trying to do, assessing the situation, trying to find the healer. Always want to find the healer first. Kill them, then the DPS, then the tank. Right here, keeping one ward up. I'm not double applying wards. I'm not feeling pressure whatsoever. Always use hardened because it's more efficient than dampened. Plus, it's a bigger shield. Now, I'm not sure if I use crushing shock here. Let me look. I actually didn't mean to go back that far. But uh, right here, I think it was a bit of a misplay. Yeah, so... Right here, I should have used Crushing Shock to interrupt it, but I figured Meteor would kind of do the same thing. So I just went ahead and hoped for the burst there. Typically, 
it probably wouldn't have killed him. But uh, yeah, I could have killed him. Went for the healer. So this is Wolf Boy, Tank Boy. Um, obviously going to try to kill him, leave him the fuck alone. Try to CC off cooldown if you can. Right here, notice my magic is really low and my stamina is really high. This is a big no-no. Very big no-no. If you're at maximum stamina on a sorcerer and you're not using dark conversion, you're fucking up. Big time. It's a huge misplay on your efficiency and your resource management. You should always, 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 unless you're being heavily pressured at full stamina to be dark conversion. I don't care how tempting this kill is. You need to have full resources in case people want to jump you. Like there could have been a night blade anywhere, and I would have been at 5% maximum magic and pretty fucked at that point. So, another healer wants to jump in. So, right here, what I do, I knew he was going to run over to his buddy right here. So, instead of interrupting the res, or him, or attacking, whatever, I wait for them to line up, and then I streak. This. Hits both of them, and so instead of me having to use a crushing shock and then, you know, whatever, Streak does both. Any opportunity you see to hit multiple people with Streak in a 1vx scenario, take it. Because you're spending like 3,000 Magicka and you're causing these people to deplete their stamina pool just from one spell. So now they're both stunned, obviously. Interrupting on my back bar. The reason I'm doing this is because I have jack shit for maximum magicka because I fucked up earlier as I mentioned. So I'm on my back bar using my full stamina pool, <laughs> which I should not have, especially with the tripod already coming off cooldown. So the next efficiency play I make, you need to kind of keep in mind of keep practicing. Obviously, I'm getting my health back. Also using one shield, but did you catch what I did there? I'll go back a little bit. What I do right here? Very subtle, right? Can't find my cursor. So what I did, you have a CP passive that anytime you cast a potion, it makes your next spell that you cast cost like 80% less. So after you pop a potion, use your most expensive spell, which is mines. So mines typically cost uh, 4560. When I pop that potion, it only cost me 900 magicka to get mines out on the field so just a little efficiency play there it's good to get in the habit of notice I'm only using one ward at any given time because I'm not feeling pressured to help with my sustain keep up the reses it, ideally you want to highlight the tank because the tank always goes for the reses I should have highlighted here Again, bash I'll cool down there's a dude hard casting frags in the back I, I don't feel pressured at all like I said, go on the healer. Wolf boy popped Zolt. Just treat him like the plague. Get the fuck away from him. Just completely ignore him. Right there, you saw the streak. A good efficiency play. Multiple stuns. One spell. That's what you want. And I should not have just tossed my ult willy nilly on this dude in his ult form. I should have waited till it expired. Because at any point in time, anyone can jump you. It would have been really nice to have that ult for like a, uh, a counter gank. And this is where mines comes into play too. He just ate all these mines. That's like 15,000 damage. He just decided to eat for nothing. And of course the Mender is helping me. And guys, take my word for it. Wolfboy dies, but the recording using a controller on PC, it missed like 15 seconds of this. So apologies for that. But... That about does it for the analysis. I really hope that was um, enlightening. I will do more like this, more in depth, um, if you guys wish. And you know, like I said, um, your priorities are different depending on what class you're playing. On a sword, obviously, super high single target damage. You just want to burst whoever. So, if you want to see more uh, videos like this, please let me know down in the comments. Seventy-eight percent of you guys are not currently subscribed, so please do your boy Horcrux a favor favor not favor english is hard subscribe like comment helps me out helps the channel a lot helps keep me motivated and i will see you guys in the next one deuces